Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast with me, Joe Rebben. Now, a certain Dutch player has been in the news quite a lot recently. Everyone's favourite Dutchman, Valt Veghorst, has been, as I said, in the news a lot. He is in good form for Holland. He's scored three goals in three, including the winner last time out against Poland at Euro 2024, coming off the bench. Now, He's, like I said, he's been in the news a lot because a lot of people are talking about his form. and he, Even Man United fans I've seen saying, oh, maybe we should give him another chance. You know, if Ten Hag's still here next year, we could buy him. Like, lads, <laughs> he's already shown at Premier League level that he's not good enough. Um, but yeah, he's been in the news again because of his form. And also, according to the Daily Telegraph, Ajax are now looking at the Dutch strike. Obviously, Ajax is a famous Dutch club, big Dutch club. Not had a great time recently, but still you know, probably their version of Manchester United, to be fair. Um, but the Daily Telegraph are reporting Ajax are close to the signing of Valt Veghorst from Burnley in a cut price deal. Veghorst is hesitant to play in the Championship next season. I mean... Obviously, um, we obviously know that he wouldn't play in the championship. I know last time he said that it was because that he had to be played at the top level to be considered for Qatar 2022, which to be fair, he went to the tournament. He actually did quite well. Do you remember the two goals he scored against Argentina? Forcing it into extra time, I think. They were 2-0 down, weren't they? Or two goals down, maybe 3-1. I can't remember exactly. But he scored two, took it into extra time, I think. And then obviously Argentina ended up winning it as they ended up winning the whole thing. Um, but we knew last time he didn't want to play in the championship because of Qatar. This time, there's no tournament on the horizon. He's playing in the tournament now, so he just he just doesn't want to play in the championship. And I think it's it's coming out now that he never really would have played in the championship last time. He just used, and I felt like this at the time, and I got a lot of stick, and I'm sure I'll get some again. I feel like they used the whole Qatar 22 thing as an excuse to not play in the championship. And I think this time, there's no tournament coming. And he's just hesitant to play in the championship again. I still think there may be a very, very, very slight chance that he... I mean, honestly, I mean, it's mini school. I'm not expecting him to stay at all. But if we get Ruud van Nistelrooy, a Dutch legend of a manager, he might want to play for him. He might want to play for him. We'll see. I mean, we might not even be going down the Ruud van Nistelrooy route. So who knows? He's not going to play for Scott Parker in the Championship. He's not going to play for Lampard in the Championship. He's not going to play for Bellamy in the Championship. Bellamy and company didn't want him last time out in the Premier League or there were the reports at the time. Again, I'm not sure if that was a saving face experiment. Um, but the rumours were last time when he came back, when we were back in the Premier League, that he wasn't wanted by company and obviously Bellamy as well because it's a management team right or oh, that's what company always used to say it was it was a management team um, so if Bellamy is the manager again I would suspect it would be similar it might change his mind with us being in a lower league um, but we shall see but yeah the Telegraph the Daily Telegraph are reporting that he doesn't want to play in the championship which Burnley fans are like yeah fair enough we, we've seen that before that's not a shock to us um, now the report is actually behind a paywall on the Telegraph the Telegraph is like the Times and the Sun where they put their stuff behind the paywall and the Athletic, but there are ways and means around it. Um, and in their article, they say, Ajax are considering the move for the Netherlands striker Valt Veghorst in a cut price deal with Burnley. Veghorst scored within two minutes of his introduction as a late substitute in the Netherlands, 2-1 victory over Poland in Hamburg on Sunday. It was the latest in a dramatic intervention from the bench for his country from Veghorst, who famously came on to score twice for the Dutch against Argentina in Qatar 2022 and take their World Cup quarter-final into extra time. I was right. Um, Veghorst has one year left on his contract. He signed with Burnley after joining the Lancashire club from Wolfsburg in January 2022, but the 31-year-old striker is thought to be reluctant to play in the Championship next season and open to a move to a top-flight club with Ajax monitoring his situation. Now, a couple of things here. For me, um, I, I don't know if this is British bias, English bias, but for me, the Championship's better than the Dutch top flight, in my opinion. Some famous old clubs in there and some really big stadiums. If you're playing week in, week out at the Amsterdam Arena, that's going to be a good experience, right? It's one of the stadiums that I would like to go to. I want to tick a few stadiums off over the next few years. Um, it's watching games there, so I'm sure that would be an appeal. Obviously, Dutch, um, he's Dutch, so he will have Dutch bias in his case um, for that league. And obviously Ajax are kind of like their Manchester United, right? A really big, famous old club, probably the biggest in the league or one of the biggest, but not as good as they used to be at the minute. Um, so yeah, that, that's the reason why they could be looking at, at one of our out-of-form 
at club level uh, strikers. So it's going to be interesting this to see what happens with that one. But I think the EFL needs to be given more respect from certain corners of the globe because all these international managers I mean I'm not saying this is the reason why he's doing it this time like I said earlier I think he, he just doesn't want to play he, he he has ideas above his station in my opinion and he thinks he is too good for the championship I've said that since day one I feel as I said earlier I feel like they used the World Cup last time out in Qatar as as like an excuse as to why he couldn't play whereas now there's there's the, the, the tournament's happening now right there's no tournament upcoming next year so there's no reason for him to to want to leave the championship unless he thinks he's better than it. Which, if he does, fair play to him. Off you pop. Um, and another one as well. They say cut price deal, but they obviously don't go on to mention any price. It'll be interesting. I mean, I can't remember exactly how much we paid from me off the top of my head. I think it was around 10, 12 million. I would bite your hand off for, for something like eight. If Ajax offered eight, I'd bite your hand off. Because... He's only got a year left on his contract. He leaves in the summer for free if we don't sell him this summer. Obviously, next summer, he leaves next summer for free if we don't sell him this summer. I got myself tied up there, but I didn't really need to. But, yeah, I'd rather take 8 million now, or even 7 million, or something around that region, than lose him next summer for free. And bear in mind, we have already made money on him from these loans. I know Besiktas paid a fee for him, and then Manchester United had to pay that fee to Besiktas that's how I know about the fee that we got off Besiktas because Manchester United essentially like buying out a form contract right for Vegos they had to pay what they paid us to Besiktas or something along them lines anyway so we have made money on him already so you can put that in the pot if you will of what we've already made on him but yeah I'd, a lot of people always say oh he scored a goal we can add an extra few million onto the price tag that is unfortunately because of his contract we kind of and the fact that he clearly doesn't want to be here we're kind of bent over a barrel here. Like we, we can't be demanding a high fee for this player at all. He's got to go for somewhere between five and eight million for me. So it's interesting to see what he does go for. It's interesting to see what this cut price deal actually is. Hopefully, we're getting more news on it coming out over the next few weeks. If it, the best that we can hope for, in my opinion, is Ajax coming with a bid of six, seven million, and FC Twenty like. Oh shit, we we want him. So then they bid for him, and then we get a little mini biddy war going. Biddy war, bidding war going. That's 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 the best we can do in my opinion. But we'll get anywhere near over ten for him. I, I would imagine as well, because I can't imagine these two clubs having a lot of money. Part of the reason why I actually do want to sign him actually is because they're getting rid of a lot of players to reduce their wage bill. So yeah, I can't see them having a lot. I can't see it being a massive bidding war if it is a bidding war. But that's the best we can hope for. Two Dutch clubs because he's been linked to two Dutch clubs now, having a mini, a mini, a mini bidding war, put my teeth in. But yeah, it's looking like Vegos is off, I think. And I think that's the best for all parties. I know a lot of people think he would do well in the championship. Potentially, I've not seen enough of him at club, at club level to show that he can do well, other than his time at Wolfsburg, which is quite a while ago. Now he left there in 2022, didn't he? Late 20, yeah, 2022 it was. So yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's the best for all parties that we just make a bit of money on him. Well, not obviously not make money in the long haul, but just, just get some money back for him, make a loss if we have to on what we paid for him and just draw a line in the sand under it, invest in a new striker because we're going to need a new striker. We need a new striker anyway. So even if he's leaving, we need a new striker. I mean, he could have come in and been, been that guy, but yeah, he clearly doesn't want to play for us. He clearly doesn't want to play in the championship. I don't think his heart's ever been at Burnley maybe in the first few months I remember when he scored that goal at Brighton he did look quite emotional but yeah I think it's time to draw a line in the sand and say thank you for everything or thank you for nothing Vegost um, but off you pop that's it from me again today unfortunately it's another short one everything does seem to be going quiet a little bit especially on the manager front there was one tweet actually from Alan Nixon that I will just read out because um, People res people asking questions and he responds to them. That's that's how he works on Twitter. If he hasn't blocked you, uh, like he has me, uh, but there's ways around that as well. Um, but Simon Green, who is a Burnley fan, said any updates on the Burnley manager? Al, it sounds like the bookies haven't got a clue. With Rude Van Nistelrooy, the latest favourite, which is about the fifth so far. Alan Nixon responded with, what I said the other day, they met Lampard, Parker, and Rossini. May now spread the met uh, net. Sorry for whatever reason. Pace meeting people personally this week. So whether that means Pace is going out to meet managers, whether that means Pace is meeting his football people that probably did the interviews. I mean, I don't know how the interview process has worked at Burnley. I would suspect 
pace is getting his people that know more about football that he's employed rather than him doing it himself and then meeting people at the club to say right what's your thoughts who do you think interviewed the best at a guess uh, and that may, might mean he's meeting them people this week it might mean he's going to meet, meet managers this week I'm not sure that's all the information that Nixon gave on that unfortunately um, but again I'm expecting something to be announced next week I don't know how far Nixon is behind it all because obviously the, the news yesterday with the assistant manager would suggest that it is a little bit closer than Nixon's letting on I don't know I don't think any of us know what's going on apart from Pearce and Co but fingers crossed we hear something soon Next week, I think, should be, the, should be the aim for the club to get somebody in. Fingers crossed it's the right person, though. But, yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about the Valtvego situation. Do you want him to stay? Do you think we should let him leave for free in the summer? If he fires us to the Premier League, we can let him leave for free with a smile on our faces. Everyone say, right, thank you, thanks for everything. Or should we cash in now? I think we should cash in now, but let me know what you think. If you're new to the channel, like I said, I've seen some comments below saying, oh, these are great, these. I've not noticed Turfcast before. I'll keep watching. Make sure you subscribe as well, please, because we are trying to get that subscriber number up, as is every YouTube channel, to be fair. But I think we're on about 3,500 now, 3,600. So if we can get to 4,000... I was going to say before the start of the season then, there's no chance, is there? But if we can get to 4,000 before Christmas, I don't know, um, that can be the target. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching, thanks everyone for, for listening. I know some people, I was speaking to my dad actually yesterday, he says he puts it on and just listens, he doesn't watch because he potters about the house and starts like listening and stuff. So thanks everyone for watching, thanks everyone for listening, and we'll see you next time with hopefully more news. Hopefully the shows have more news packed into them, and I don't need to waffle about Valt Vegos for nine minutes because nobody wants that.